Who's gonna wake me up? Ah, uh, skill rust. Are oh, we gonna make it full? Gonna be close. <clears throat> and we made it to full. Yay, yeah, us. Yeah, I shouldn't need to use bandages too often. <clears throat> we were down to like one and a half bars and a single bandage and antiseptic got us a full heal on a sleep, so cool. Uh-oh, somebody above me or below me making noises again? All right, let me check back through chat before I get involved again. Um... All right, I think we're good. Yeah, all that uh, getting hit was not good for my clothing either. <clears throat> Guess I should have stuck with the mono blade and not getting hit. A dodge wasn't uh, keeping up, especially with the grabs and the pain. A dodge probably dropped to near zero. So then we got chain hit. All right, uh, I'm supposed to be finishing this up and getting my fab to seven. That was the original goal. Killing and pulping the local enemies was also important, though, so time well spent. Go ahead and headlamp on. Have some... Mm, cookies, cheese, the plus 15, plus 20, and plus 10 toastums. All the good toastums. Turn our MP3 player back on. Wait 30 minutes. Up the base. Focus 111. All right, watch out. Let's see how fast that number disappears. Focus 111. Work. Focus 28. <laughs> That's what I mean. I just eh, can't be bothered anymore. I'll just learn the old-fashioned way. Really slow. Oof, 36, 39. Yeah, really slow. 40. 45. 62. Can we make it before we get tired? 74. 90. There we go. All done. I don't care about the actual longbow. You get stuck in the corner. <clears throat> All right. So we have Fab 7. Let's double check what we're going to need. For the metal door. So, I don't have my hammer with me? How do I not have my hammer with me? I need spikes, and I need sheet metal, and I need three door hinges. So, eight spikes, then drag over door hinges and sheet metal. We should have another hinge here, right? No hinge here. Grab those hinges. Smash that door, but there's another broken door here. Here we go. I'll grab some more. Yeah, grab all this wood stuff. Who knows what we're going to need? Into the pile. All right, eight spikes. <clears throat> oh, the backpack's probably still outside by that car. We'll go get it in a second. I would have noticed eventually <laughs> all the missing stuff. Uh, right there. It's a nice thing about fighting near your base. Harder to forget <laughs> where you left stuff. 
I still need to source a bunch of clean water too. I need to get a six liter tank, get it filled up and uh, get it on a fire so I can have plenty of clean water at hand. Uh oh, my brownies are going old. Can't have that. What else we got? Uh, toastums, corn cereal, milk balls, candy. Good enough. We finish our spikes. All right, spikes. Uh, all to their sheet metal. And just take the whole pile. Uh, what was the other thing? Um, four lumps. I'm going to take... Scrap metal is easier to source, even though it's a larger number. I think I'll take the scrap metal over. So, eight sheet metal and the scrap metal. Wait, I don't have sheet metal here? What have I been... Oh, I've been dragging back small sheet metal. Not the same thing. My bad. Gotta rethink this. Uh, eight sheet metal or two steel plating. Um, we'll go disassemble lockers next door. I think that will disassembling them will give me sheet metal instead of the small. I think. What I want to know is, where the hell's my hammer? I, I have a hammer, so why was it telling me I didn't have... Eh, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, yeah, let's go get some, uh, some sheet metal. Hey, you! <laughs> Damn it! I don't want to bust out all my hit points this time. Come here, you. Follow me up this way. God damn, this guy's quick. He's faster than I am. Wow, I don't see that very often. And there goes more stuff hitting the ground. Ah, he got absorbed. He wasn't even full strength. That's funny. Right, you're being pesky. Whoa, he's being... Holy crap, I'm out of stamina. Oh, God. Oh, this might be bad. Oh, this might be bad. What did I do? 175? What the hell am I carrying? Ah! Uh, oh, crap. <laughs> this is going to be painful. All right, we got to drop the backpack. Even though he's going to hit me a bunch of times. All right, now I got zero stamina, and I have a dissolute devourer on me. I'm winded. This is very bad. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, I put myself in a really bad place, not realizing I was so overweight. I didn't know I had uh, picked up all that stuff. I thought I was moving it, not picking it up. Let's see. I don't know what I can do here, really. This could be the death of us. Yeah, this this is really bad. Um, hmm, I don't think this one through. I really screwed this one up. He's gonna keep hitting me. Pain's gonna mount. I can't get. I'm I'm so winded. My movement speed will be near zero compared to his. So I can't get like a vehicle door between me and him. If I can get all the way to my motorcycle and get on it, I can get away, and then I can back up. But I think I'm going to get hammered when I try it. Let's see how many times I get hit. Get out, of, get out of that mode. Oh, we'll be fine. Yeah, I just got to... Or not. God, that torso damage. Plus, I got to go all the way around to the side entrance. Ooh, boy. Now, he can't devour me. Yeah, this this could be death right here. Oh my goodness. I really stepped into this one. 
I've got 10 rounds in the auto magnum, but I don't think 10 rounds is going to be enough. And I, that's presuming I even hit him that many times. Wow. Wowie wow wow. This is really, really bad. And I got nothing here that's going to do much. Oh, this has nothing to do with uh, challenging the cataclysm. This is just being really stupid. <laughs> this is just running around while you're overweight and allowing your stamina to go winded while you're, you know you've got a, a bad guy nearby. It's just really, really inattentive play. That's all that is. I don't know if I can make it that far. I don't see any... Oh, wait, wait. There are... There's no drain pipe, is there? Plus, I don't think... In, I'm not sure if it, uh, being winded affects whether you can climb a drain pipe either. There's none in reach, though. I don't see anything I can use close enough to make a difference. <sighs> yeah, that's a long walk of death. He's going to hit me in the torso enough times to probably kill me before I can make it to the bike. I don't need to drop anything. I already dropped the backpack. We're underweight currently. I'll go overweight again if my if the pain ratchets up enough for my strength to drop again. But I already dumped the backpack. That's what was weighing me down. That was the first thing I did. But uh, yeah, only dropping things in your wielded in your hands is a free action. Everything else costs. It doesn't tell you, but everything else costs. I talked about that in one of the previous episodes. Oh. Parkour is not going to help enough. Not while I'm uh, winded. He's still going to be able to stay right next to me. Let's see how many times he hit. I want him to hit anywhere but the torso. I mean, feel free to hit me anywhere else. That's fine. Any other body part. I still think this is my best chance. Problem's going to be pain and grabs. Yep, right there. God damn it, we're going to die to this stupid thing. <laughs> I am so annoyed. Oh, I don't want to redo this. Oh my gosh. We're not going to make it. He's hitting me in the torso too much. There's a tiny possibility that... Um, tiny, tiny possibility that I can shave him off, but I don't even think I'll make it to that vehicle. We're now in distracting pain, so we're getting slower and slower. Oh my goodness. I just don't think the auto, I don't think the auto magnum's got enough. He's got too many hit points. I don't have any grenades. I don't know why you guys are talking about grenades. <laughs> mm, this is not good. I don't honestly see a way out of this. I, I just don't think I can survive it. Vehicle's not close enough. Even the semi, I don't I don't think I can move fast enough to get around the corner of a wheel to kind of block him for a round or two. And if I take the time, we're actually gaining stamina. We're back to a quarter bar. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a suicide option. QQ. We're not dead yet. We're close. Stop hitting me in the damn torso. Yes, go for the legs. Let me get a tiny bit of stamina back.
Uh, stop with the torso. I'm desperately afraid to try to use that stamina to gain a, a space or two of movement. Head is fine. Leg is fine. Anywhere but torso. No! <laughs> He's going to kill me like one step from my bike. Do I burn that bar of stamina? Unmanageable pain. Are we going overweight again? Ah, we're going overweight again. Oh, crap. Here it comes. And then the problem is going to be if he's directly behind the bike <laughs> when I when I finally get on it. I think I have to burn the stamina now. Let's do let's do an experiment. So we're taking whatever happens, but I'm going to do a backup real quick. So if I if I die, we can experiment and see if there's something else that might have saved me. We'll take audience uh, audience suggestions on from this point what might have saved me. So we'll do a quick save. Give me a second to uh, copy the save folder over. This will be an interesting one to uh, to try to redo from this point. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, it was a combination of going zero stamina unknowingly and just having any kind of heavy creature this is probably the worst i mean a hulk would have been just as bad but uh well eh, the hulk might not been actually been as bad i could have used the super punches tactically to move maneuver but yeah this particular one it's just a really unfortunate co coincidence of two circumstances a particular monster and me going out of stamina all right we've got a uh, backup Let's, uh, let's see if we die from here. I think it is uh, burn stamina time, so we go to run mode. Nah, what, what car? What car? The problem is I can't get into a car and get it closed. He'll be on me the entire way. So I would step into the car, he would step into the door frame. I'd never get the thing closed. Plus, this guy's strong enough to bash through uh windows and stuff pretty easily but yeah there's there's absolutely no way when you're in this status to get him off of being directly adjacent to me at the speeds that we're moving this one's a wreck <laughs> this one's riddled with holes there's no safety point in this thing <laughs> it's it's all wreckage for the most part and the same thing would be true as soon as i tried to move on to a frame even with parkour he's still, still going to be sticking right to me there's no way to get the, sp the one space or more distance that I need to get in and get a door closed between me and him. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm grabbed. Damn it. I'm hoping to peel him off on the side of the building very slightly. Nope, he shifted. I'm not gaining any ground, as you can see. Oh, we got into space. Hold out, stamina. Hold out, stamina. We're so close. I need to get him off of the direct line with my vehicle. So he's not going to block my movement when I hop on, hopefully. Come on, stamina. Come on, stamina. Oh, he's going to get in the cargo carrier, isn't he? <laughs> oh, crap. Do I try to... Well, he shouldn't. If I come down and he's next to me, if I get here... He should stay here to hit me, and I'll be able to back up. That's the theory. Oh. Ah, we're so close. Please tell me he's not grabbing me. Oh, my God. <laughs> it started. Please tell me he's not grabbed me. Whew. <laughs> Now I gotta get the fuck out, and I gotta get uh, gotta get some bandages on. Let's see. Let's go this way because I think it's more likely to be clear. But I still have the bandages with me. Stop here. Bandage. Torso. Antiseptic. Torso. <laughs> Uh, you want to see how close I got? Let's see how close I got. 
Edit player, you set uh, set hit points. We are at 17. We got down to 17. Our max is like 95, I think. 17 is where we ended up. All right. Now <laughs> we need to make absolutely sure nothing else is in the area and uh, get some healing done. Just let some time pass. So, what are the better chances for that? Bring it into here, close the metal door, and then just sit in the corner here and wait? It's not likely anything's going to wander its way all the way into this, this space here. I've completely cleared all the hallways and such. Yeah, let's do that. We'll, uh, we'll back in. This is where a hulk or a lich comes down that damn staircase again. Oh, oh man, should I leave the door open in case I have to boogie? I should leave the door open. My scent trail will peter out. Nothing should wander in here if I don't bring attention to myself. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay down here. Let's get our our breath back. Now we have stamina. Let's get our pain taken care of. Let's use the good stuff. Have some oxy. Uh oh. What the hell? <laughs> well, that could be somebody that came in from the field. But they. I don't think they'll be able to wander around to come find me. But they might. It is a possibility. All right. We're just going to stand here. I love it. I could hear that through my, my, my MP3 player. That's interesting. All right, we're just going to sit here for hours until I get some health back. Let's turn safe mode on. Once we get back to three bars, I'll consider us out of the danger zone. Did I almost die? Oh, razor close. It was a stupid death. It was death by my own stupidity. It was not a glorious death. <laughs> it would not have been a glorious death. Let's say instead that I survived my own idiocy. A shining example of how not to play Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead successfully. I think the decision to burn the stamina when we when we got to that point and saved it was the right move. I think I probably wouldn't have made it if I hadn't actually started to burn the stamina. We got a, a few steps on him for a bit of that trip. Two bars. Is two bars enough? Two bars is probably enough. Let's, uh, where did we leave that guy? In my base, unless he followed me out the door. But we're back to our normal move rate. Pain's gone. Do I have any water left? I don't have any water left here. Do I have anything else to drink? I do not. Uh, that's fine, I guess. Yeah, there's no quench items here. Okay, let's uh, switch back to the electric engine. Thank goodness. Man, I would hate have hate, hated to start this one over with the start we had. But we spotlighted something up there. Thorny Shamblers or something. Uh, I've got to find if that dissolute who's causing me such problems is still in the area. Still in my base, or did you wander? He wandered. Great. I don't know where he wandered. 
be rude to bump into him later. Alright, well I don't know where he's gone off to. He's taking himself hither and yon. Um you do. Yep, yeah, we'll go get the backpack. Let's uh let's go ahead and get the bike parked again. Good thing it was lined up on uh, the exit. I think I'm going to start leaving this open too. Well, for the moment. We'll close it again when we come back. But Alright, backpack's right there. So the plan originally was to go get some sheet metal <laughs> before I got so stupidly interrupted. Hey, how about we drop all this crap I'm carrying? <laughs> it's gotten me in trouble. Yeah, I'm talking about all you... Not all of you crap. Man, most of you crap. Uh, no, actually all of you crap. Get out of my inventory. I will keep that, please. Yeah, I'm going to have to source some water pretty soon. Okay, so 108, 134. Actually, let's we're going to be hauling some stuff back again. What else can we leave? Uh, I think most of this weight's coming from my military gear. Halligan bar is pretty weighty too, but I need the tools. Yeah, it's just coming from all the crap I'm wearing. Um, well, we'll drag stuff back. Let's get this stuff out of the building. Our doorway. Metal benches. Ooh, made of scrap metal. What do we got? Bandages. Football armor, leg guards, pipes, lots of scrap metal, small sheet metal. I don't need small. We'll just take that for the moment and that and we're going to find out if disassembling these sheet metal alright so let's just take a bunch of these apart new bandage sheet metal out of all those that's terrible <laughs> it's really bad huh is 
And only one out of those two. Alright, so it's a little harder to come by than I thought. Okay, we're just keeping busy while we heal up from uh, my strategic folly. <clears throat> that was a little better. I think that'll be enough for now. Let me get the mop out again. Been making a mess. Okay, so trying this again. <laughs> I needed spikes. I needed sheet metal. And I needed, uh, what, three hinges and then 36 scrap metal. And then we'll do the variant. Uh-oh, it's not going to let me. I want I want the closed metal door with the peephole. And I can't see the full details, I think. Do I need actually a peephole to see down there? Uh, uh. In. One people. <laughs> I don't have the people. Alright, let's go see who's making noise out there after we put our stuff back. People's not an option to craft. That's sad making. Where do you get one? Certain doors have peepholes? Let's leave backpack and the bow sling here. Get out the mono blade. Or any shambler. Guess I should get the metal door fixed on the other, or replace that wood door. I think I'll wait till it gets broke. <clears throat> uh, what did I bring back? Trunks, lumps, and scrap. All right, exterior door fixed. Interior door at least blocks line of sight for now. And I have just enough to make another one. Cool. 
we got lots more lockers we can go take care of. We got that line, and then we got four lines of lockers over there we can do later. Should we need them? Uh, let's see. I next need to... <laughs> now that we've got all that done. Uh, the goal is to get some wall wiring put in. How much duct tape and copper wire do we have? We've got uh, 220 or so copper wire. That's about 10 wall wirings worth. That's probably more than I need right there initially. And then um, we've been picking up some duct tape. Not sure what my total is. Tell you what, let's, uh, oops, take that. Let's try the thing. Let's do this thing. I haven't done this thing yet. Let's go shift Y. Then we're going to do shift P for personal. Personal zone. Unload everything. No. No. Sure. Unload all. To my right. Exit. Yes. All right. So we now have a unsorting zone kind of attached to our character right here if i stand here these are now in the zone and if i hit this there it did it cool into the pile inventory here uh anything else in containers I need to unload? No. Guess I should unload all the crap out of here that we're gonna leave in this location, huh? Um that gonna be. I think I already unloaded most of it. A lot of the stuff I need to carry around with me. I have my sheath with the spork. MREs. So, let's now get some wall wiring going on. Place wall wiring. Fab 2, 20 minutes. Multi-tool we went and found. And then copper wire and duct tape. Uh, do I have to be adjacent to the wall? Place wall wirings. There, please. All right, so... Uh, what was that thing called? I forget. Oh, it's down here. Never mind, it's this thing. Uh, and how to actually 
do the thing. Do I drop it there and examine it? Um, place it. Oh, that's right. The place. Come here, you. Place ASRG. Um, there, I guess. Refill, rename, take down, plug in. All right, didn't I, did I pick up a storage battery? Small storage battery, well, we'll see if that'll work. Yeah, we got the larger one in the recycling center right there. But uh, we got a small one. I think we can do it with a small one. Maybe. Battery power output, 33%. Onboard battery power, 330. Wait five minutes. Onboard battery power, 426. Uh, so, man. So if we go with a large battery, it's what, 50,000? Wow, how long is that going to take? <laughs> I don't want to do that math. Let's wait an hour. No, go away. And it's maxed out already. All right, I guess that won't be too bad. That's with one generator. We're going to try to get at least one more. We'll keep an eye out for a third. I don't think I'll likely need more than that. Um, Are you restricted to one object per space when you're doing the household grid stuff? I've done so little of this. Hey there, welding rig. Is it already plugged in or not? Uh, I got nothing to ease repairs currently. Eh, I'll figure that out later. <clears throat> Well, on a vehicle, you can stack multiple things with certain limitations, of course. So I'm just not sure if I can stack like a 60 liter tank. Uh, with a vehicle, I'd put it like a 60 liter tank and other stuff on there. So I'd have attached to a vehicle, a kitchen unit and so on. I just don't know if you can do that with uh, house wiring stuff. All right, so we got the welding rig in. Actually, we can bring the vehicle over and see if uh, we can knock a ding out of something. Yeah, let's do that. Super glue and duct tape. Soldering iron. Yes. Uh, duct tape.
No damage parts on the vehicle. Well, sort of. Alright, we'll have to pick up some military composite armor plates from the next military vehicle we spot that has them. Those can't be repaired anymore. You have to just replace them. Uh, so vehicle's good to go. Back it out. Just below the yellow line is my... Even with the, uh, the door. So, if I'm going to stay in the base for a bit, I could yoink the large battery out and put it on the network to get it charged up. Why can't you repair military composite armor? Because somebody said it couldn't be done and they took it out. <laughs> and then a lot of people argued and it's still out. <laughs> that's why. You used to be able to, but you can't anymore. Somebody says that's not something you should be able to do as a uh, total stranger, just bootstrapping your stuff up through the technology levels and the cataclysm. Is it repairable in real life? Feel free to go to Discord, go to Reddit and argue with the other people that say yes and no and maybe and get into the vagaries of how that works and <laughs> all the reasons. Not a conversation I can have because I am not a uh, metallurgist, machinist, whatever disciplines are uh, involved in that particular discussion. Just know that for the moment, it is out. Experimental currently, you cannot repair that stuff. Which I consider no big deal. I mean, they've made a bunch of other changes to make repairing vehicles very kind of tough and resource and time centric, which I'm perfectly okay with. Vehicles have been massively, stupidly overpowered for a decade in Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. So anything they do to bring vehicles down in some way, whether it's making them harder to build, harder to repair, whatever... I'm all for because they were there. They are still, even with all these new limitations, still so vastly important and uh, influential in survival in the game that uh, I'm all for it. So uh, it's really no big deal just to grab a few composite armor plates from other vehicles and carry them around with you. When one gets damaged, just rip it off and stick a new one on. <laughs> it's very simple. I mean, you've got a vehicle, obviously, you're working on one. You're going to pass plenty of the military vehicles you can grab more plates from. So, I got no issue with it. Uh, no, I'd have to yank the battery. Well, maybe. I guess I could jump. Maybe I could jumper cable it and it would transfer the power over because I've maxed out the current battery. We can give it a try. Let's, uh, let's bring it over there and we'll try to jumper it instead of me yanking the battery out. It's been a long time since I did anything like that. Not something I think about. Uh, yeah, we'll go right to there. Let's see. I know I picked up some various cables. We'll just use the jumper cable. So, activate jumper cable. The vehicle. Activate jumper cable. The vehicle there. All right, so battery is maxed out. This doesn't use anything unless you're actively using it. So theoretically, we should now get trickle charge into the vehicle. So we're at 70% on 100,000 capacity. Let's uh, just pass some time and see what happens. We'll pass an hour. 70%. Uh, yeah. Seventy-one percent. So yeah, we can we can charge it up via that. That's why I need to get a couple more of these things. It's just gonna be so slow trying to charge this thing up. We'll go to sleep. We'll see how much I get when I sleep. We're tired again. Um, we'll get a good night's sleep and we'll see what percentage of return or recovery we get on this hundred thousand. The the nice thing is it's it's a low amount of power overall, but it's. No, no fuel needed, no nothing. So it's just going to continuously generate that power. We'll leave it on the charger. Okay. Um, we had somebody make a noise, actually. Let's go deal with whatever that was. I haven't heard it recently since we finished that other stuff, but let's just go double check. 
Yeah, we'll ditch both of those until I know what I'm dealing with. Nobody in there. Turn safe mode on and just buzz around. All right, maybe it was uh, one of the re few remaining ones upstairs. We'll toss some antiseptic on. Probably be full health anyway. <laughs> full health, health care returned. Apparently, I rusted my health care. All right, we were at seventy-one percent. We went to sleep at thirteen hundred. Oh, bastard zombies. <laughs> I checked. I checked. Uh, guess I am going to have to start wearing earplugs. We only got, what, not quite five hours of sleep there? What did we end up with after five hours? Four percent after five hours, so... Five times that long to be about 20% for a full night's sleep. Um, I, I think that will, it won't, if I leave it on the battery charger as we drive around, now that we've mostly finished the long range travel, that might be enough to keep it going, my, my daily usage. But one more, I think, will, will pretty much get us there. I think one more, especially when we spend some more time here near the base, uh, puttering around doing other stuff, I think we'll probably have it. How did I get an auto magnum so early? Uh, we're not playing a standard game of Cataclysm where you start out as a, a, a know-nothing uh, loser, lucky survivor who has to grind his way through all of the skills and so on. This is a preset generated storyline type of playthrough where we're positing that uh, we are an elite combat vampire hybrid sent by the vampire lords to take over this area and establish a, a blood enclave here in the football stadium. So they didn't send me here naked. <laughs> they, they they actually let me bring some gear with me. So I created the character with the uh, unlimited point pool system, then brought him into the game world after I got a map that I liked, then gave him some extra traits and mutations, gave him some bionics, and gave him some gear. So there you go. There is no cheating in a single-player game. But yes, I cheated. Not cheating. Is it cheating to use a free point system? Is it cheating to put your game world on 10 times loot and 1% zombie movement speed? No, it's not. <laughs> not even in the slightest. I get, a, I get it all excited when people give people grief about quote-unquote cheating in a single-player game. Show me the Cataclysm Olympic rulebook that shows me how everybody's supposed to play, and I will play by that rulebook. Till then, I get to play how I like to have fun. And so should you. <laughs> All right. That's the other reason I'm doing this kind of a challenge. I'm trying to bring attention. I see a lot of posts on Reddit for, from players that have played the game, gotten to the point where they can survive fairly regularly on the standard settings but aren't real comfortable with an open world sandbox type game. They don't have uh, a specific uh, doodad to go find to win the game or go kill the dragon to, to win the game or, or whatever. They, they want some kind of structure. So I'm trying to show there are other ways to play the game where you can make your own scenarios up, make your own challenges up, which is what the challenge series all do. But um, this one's even more so than most in that um, you can set up your own world, your own conditions, your own storyline, and then uh, drop yourself in and have fun. Do whatever you like. More noise. All right, I don't have my packs on. We need to go check the noise. Boomer. All right, we're about to get biled again. Should be pretty safe to get biled here unless there's something right behind this guy. Just you. All right. Whoop. Somebody else over there. Uh, yeah. Let's drag this stuff out of here. All 
Ah, we must have somebody on the upper level. Where did the gas come from? Or the smoke? Oh, is this going to be an ashen brawler? Do we have an ashen brawler rolling around? Oh, crap. I think we have an ashen brawler. Could be a smoke zombie, but it could also very likely at this evolution be an ashen brawler. Can you tame a dragon in DDDA? There are no dragons in the base version of DDDA, except for one. There is one, but I don't want to give any details on it. But no, you cannot tame it. And I don't. Uh, you'd have to play Magiclism for dragons, the Magiclism mod, which is really cool. And I do recommend players that have played a bit of the base game check out the Magiclism mod. It does have dragons, but I don't believe any of them are tameable. I think if you want that kind of thing, if you play with a Dino mod, I'm pretty sure you can have Dino mounts. I think you can uh, you can ride around on dinosaurs. That'd be the closest. Now you can't install the reactor on a vehicle. It's a furniture item only, so that reactor cannot be done on a vehicle. It's not a replacement for the mini reactor, which we used to have on vehicles that got removed. Um, it's a furniture only item, so you can use it for a base set up like this, but you can't put it on a vehicle. There's no option to actually install it via the vehicle system. Yes, it will charge outside the reality bubble. It's one of those things where it time stamps. So the way the reality bubble works, I've talked about before, you have a square two and a half, two and a half map squares out from your character's location. It's just a square. That's the reality bubble. And that's where the game fully simulates everything. If you leave an area where the battery charger is going currently, for example, it will put a timestamp on that and you'll be gone. And when you come back and the item, the recharge, uh, the, the generator I set up and the bike recharging, it'll check the timestamp that was left. It'll check the current time and then it will automatically generate the progress that should have occurred between those two timestamps. So it'll update the information based on how far you were, how long you were gone. Um, that's how the food rot system works and things like that as well. That's why if you leave the reality bubble, uh, come back a year later, the food insta rots as soon as it, your reality bubble hits it um, because it updates those, those uh, rot timers um, when it rechecks the timestamps. Um, Fire is one of the few things that do not follow that behavior for various technical reasons, um, mostly to do with so many collapsing parts and conditions and so on. I think it's just too much simulation to handle, and it's too weird to come back and just have it all process at once or whatever. Uh, long ago, I think I read something about how that worked and why fire they didn't update fire constantly. But um, fire is one of the few things you'll notice that does not update. If you light a house on fire and you leave the reality bubble... When you come back a year later, that house will still be on fire because fire does not do the update timer. But you won't generally notice too many other circumstances like that. But yes, it's going to generate the power while I'm gone. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, we might have an ashen brawler rolling around. <laughs> that's the that's the moral of that story. Let's check this side too. Another boomer. What's with all the boomers rolling around? Actually, uh, screw it. Creepy crawler. Come here, you. At least we got it down to a manageable number. The things that show up are very few and far between. Pretty easily dealt with. Minor inconvenience is waking me up. I wonder if it was it's probably the boomer that just woke me up from a nap. Alright, I still gotta make sure I take care of some water needs. If I need to rip a six liter tank out of a vehicle, or... Actually, uh, no, that's 60 liters there also. I don't have anything, I don't think, inside the building here that's going to give me a 60 liter tank that I've seen so far anyway. 
So, let's go into a basement and uh, take apart a water heater or just bring one that's got clean water in it. We did have a basement nearby, but it was a uh, roach basement. Was it this house? Yeah, it was this house. This character shouldn't have too much of a problem dealing with roaches one-on-one -on -one, or even a couple of them um, and the few zombies that are down there. So I could go to that basement. Uh, that house has one too. Let's go check that house out. We'll see if we can get a uh, working water heater with uh, with water in it. That's going to become a problem if I don't. Uh, let's bring the backpack. <laughs> Needs the backpack. Think the disluted's hiding in my cardboard maze? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he would have uh, popped out if he was. I think he would have showed up by now. My only guess is he wandered off. He heard something and wandered off some direction. <laughs> 